Let's talk about ugly people for a second here. It's often hard for unattractive people to become confident. Why is that? Probably because they were bullied ad nauseum in high school by cruel teenagers. Or maybe even in primary school by little demon kids that called them poop face. And it doesn't help that when they walk down the street, minding their own business, trying to get a hot dog, people give them the geez that f***er is ugly face. Yet I am sure you know many unattractive people that are popular and successful. I mean, just look at Jay-Z, he looks like Joe Camel and was still able to wife up Beyonce. These ugly people have an attractive self-image, which changes everything. You see, Dr. Maxwell was a plastic surgeon and psychologist. Back in the 70s, the Kim K's of his era would come down to change their face. Many of these people would go on to live happier lives. They'll be thrilled, they'll be excited as they got new faces, new Botox, looking like Selena Gomez walking around the streets, right? Some of these people swore that he didn't change anything. They wanted their money back, they wanted a refund. Nothing changed for these people. Now this led Maxwell to realize that something deeper was going on. And hence, this is where the concept of self-image was created. Your self-image is the idea of who you think you are. It's the image you have of yourself that's shaped from birth. It is probably the best determiner of success, not your outward appearance. So that is the first takeaway from the book. Self-image matters. Jim and Steph win $20 million from the lottery. They both quit their jobs the next day, as you would, and move out of the suburban home that they were living in into a new mansion up at the Hollywood Hills. Down the street is Brad Pitt's mansion. Across the street, mowing the lawn, waving at them is Terry Crews. They have finally made it. A neighbor invites them to attend a party that's going on later that night. The two agree and attend it together. This party is bad and bougie. This party is lit. This party is into any trending phrase right now. In the corner is the owner of Snapchat, drinking some soda. Mia Khalifa just took a dive into the swimming pool. They even have the Mexican guy who plays Hector in every movie. The couple are excited to say the least. However, they feel kind of out of place. They can't help but feel like imposters. Like they're not meant to be there. Only three weeks ago, Jim was driving a forklift in some warehouse. Steph was taking care of old people in nursing homes. Over the next two years, Jim and Steph make a series of terrible financial decisions and miraculously blow away their lottery winnings. They file for bankruptcy and return back to their old lives. Does this sound far-fetched to you? Did you know that lottery winners are three to five times more likely to file for bankruptcy than normal people? This has to do with our self-image yet again. Our brains work as a cybernetic system. Cybernetic literally means steersman in Greek. During my engineering degree, I learned a lot of stuff about server mechanisms, which are basically cybernetic systems that use negative feedback to steer something towards a desired target. I know that sounds complicated, but let me simplify it for you. When you're driving your car and you put it into cruise control, a servo mechanism is responsible for you not getting a speeding ticket. When a hit-seeking missile launches from North Korea and shoots down the plane, it is the servo mechanism that steers and adjusts its course based off sensors to ensure that it hits its target. Our brains work towards realizing our self-image with the precision of a guided missile. This is why Jim and Steph managed to blow away $20 million their brains were not ready for that change. Mike Tyson grew up in the ghetto, in the streets. He became one of the most dominant boxers in the world at age 18. He bought freaking tigers. I don't even know how you're allowed to buy tigers. How is that legal? He bit people's ears off, which doesn't seem too hygienic to me. He blew over $300 million. I'm on the bet his self-image had not acclimated itself to the new success that he got. That's why he became broke and filed for bankruptcy. That is the second biggest takeaway. The human brain follows cybernetic principles. No one consciously creates greatness through logical thinking. Greatness comes when you allow your subconscious mind to come up with a solution. Famous authors do not create amazing novels by themselves. The characters and plots come to them. 
the writer of the Harry Potter franchise, J.K. Rowling, got her billion dollar idea from a dream. The difference between the great and the average is the ability to become receptive to these ideas. Imagine that your brain is like an antenna. Just like an antenna, you need to put yourself in the right frequency to match that of the ideas and solutions coming in. Keep in mind that you still need to do the work. This isn't the law of attraction where you're just sitting around, all right? You still need to do the work. Anyone could have come up with an idea for Uber. However, only the founders did the work. Facebook could have been your idea, but Mark Zuckerberg stole it first. You must equip yourself with necessary knowledge that's needed for success first. Read the relevant books, study from the masters, get whatever knowledge you need. Then you must allow your subconscious mind to do the rest. Forget about it for a while. Take a walk in nature, play a video game, clear your mind completely so that you can come back more powerful with better ideas. Even Bruce Lee had the same philosophy in regards to martial arts. A good martial artist does not become tense, but ready. Not thinking, yet not dreaming. Ready for whatever may come. When the opponent expands, I contract. When he contracts, I expand. And when there is an opportunity, I do not hit. It hits all by itself. Not thinking, yet not dreaming is the key point here. Number three, we must become relaxed so that our minds are more receptive to success. 10 years ago, skateboarding was my life. I used to practice it every single day for hours non-end. In my group of friends, at that time, I was the best. Yeah, whenever there was a skateboarding competition in my small town, I would always, always flunk. It would almost be like I had never skated a day in my life. I could never do any of the tricks that I practiced during competition. The same pattern repeated itself in high school. Before exams, I was the man. I don't know the answers to any questions the teacher asked before the teacher even asked it. My friends would often come to me and I would to them before the exam. These same friends would end up doing better than me. As soon as the exam started, my hands would get sweaty and I would not be able to remember a single thing I studied. You can imagine how frustrating all of this was to me. It took me years to be able to solve this problem and it ultimately boiled to just one thing, my imagination. Before the skateboarding competitions, I would imagine myself not being able to land my tricks and the negative thought manifested itself into the real world. Before my exams, I would worry about flunking, about failing like I did in the past, and that very result would manifest itself in the real world. The human nervous system cannot tell the difference between imagined experience and real experience. If you remember a memory of yourself getting bullied as a child, you might feel some of those emotions in the present moment, even though you're a grown ass man right now, or grown ass woman. If you suspect your partner of cheating, your heart will skip a beat as if you just caught them. Your imagination can burden you if it's fixated on the negative or empower you if it focuses on the positive outcomes. The more powerful your imagination, the more real the outcomes can become. Spend time imagining your success as vividly as you can and allow the imagination, the images to transform your self image, enhance your reality. This is called mental rehearsal. And this is the fourth biggest takeaway that the human imagination is a powerful tool. Have you ever known someone who always needed something to complain about? The person who could never stay happy for any significant amount of time. They get a job promotion and the next week they're complaining about their colleagues. They win a ticket to Hawaii and they can't enjoy the trip because of the rude receptionist. They move to a bigger house, then complain about mowing a bigger lawn. Some people cannot stay happy for long because their minds have been trained to look for the negative. In the same way that you can pick up your name being called out in a loud room, these people can pick up the negatives in any situation. These people tend to be miserable in life because they don't understand one fundamental principle. 
is that happiness is nothing more than a habit. Some people live in what we would call ideal situations, Lamborghinis, money, mansions, private chefs, and yet they cannot be happy because they don't understand that happiness is a habit. And other people live in less than ideal situations, in poverty, nothing to their name, and yet they're some of the happiest people in the world. Happiness comes from the server mechanism that has learned to identify the good in every situation. It comes from choosing to be cheerful, practicing gratitude, and being more friendly. Happiness comes from choosing to smile more often, not taking yourself as seriously. It comes from learning to overcome negativity quickly and not dwelling on it. That is the final big takeaway. We make our own happiness. In life, you must learn that before your outside circumstances can change, you must first change yourself internally. Everything is shaped from your self-image. It is in your best interest to invest in it.